Hello, Travel Jazzman Scholar here. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about something that I spend a lot of time analyzing, studying, and participating in, and that's improvised music, and particularly jazz. And what really drew me to jazz originally was a series of experiences that I had where I felt the time in the music very deeply. And by time, jazz musicians, when they speak about time, they're referring to how one relates to the given pulse of a music. It isn't necessarily that someone has a good sense of rhythm, which might be the way they can place beats upon other beats and um, create different patterns within beats. That's what rhythms are. But time is really this internal sense of where the pulse is. And what's critical in jazz, in the improvisational experience of jazz, in the melodic line that's being improvised, is the way that it um, stretches. Now, a lot of... Um, analysts of jazz, a lot of critics, a lot of writers about the music, and even the musicians themselves like to speak about the word swing. And that's kind of the general catch term that's used, but I think that that's very limiting because a lot of different types of jazz can be called swing or swinging, and it really doesn't address the specificity that I'm trying to describe, which is a real, um, the melodic, so the pulse of the bass player is doom, 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 and then there's an improvised line which is playing against that and stretching away and moving towards and stretching away and a very talented musician who's using their voice and saxophone players and other wind, woodwind instruments have a much easier time with this than the percussive instruments like piano because the breath is propelling it and the breath is very capable of creating a kind of you have this this kind of beat and the breath can go it can kind of do this elasticity against a stated time. The breath is very organically connected to time. And so to go to a, a percussion instrument with the fingers, it has to be propelled by the voice of the musician. So the voice of the musician has to have translated itself through the fingers of the artist in order to get that feeling. Probably the first person to ever do that was Bud Powell. And I'm going to play an excerpt um, from Bud Powell's, and then I'm going to play a couple ex excerpts of Bill Evans. So the first thing I want to play is Bud Powell, one of the earliest pianists who was able to make that, as I said, connection between the voice and the hand. And he could play remarkably fast, blistering tempos. In fact, when you hear it, you can't you almost can't hear the swing because it's going so fast. So what I have for you is a short excerpt, about nine seconds long, um, from Sweet Georgia Brown recorded in the very early 50s and Bud Powell's playing this very very fast eighth note line and I'm going to slow it down um, to uh, less than half the speed so that you can actually hear the way the lines are swinging in that tempo so here's Bud Powell with an excerpt from Sweet Georgia Brown Now I'm going to play the same solo, um, except I'm going to slow it down. And, and you can hear the way the line pulls against the time. Okay, now, something that's a little, maybe a little easier to hear is a, is a later recording from close to 20 years later. This is Bill Evans playing a ballad, and I'll let you hear a, a rather long, about 25-second excerpt of this ballad, and then I'll show you the, the line that I'd like to reference. I'll play just that line for you, and then I'll have it slowed down, and you should be able to get a feel of this elasticity, the way in which the musician accelerates a line, so it's... It's starting out at one tempo, da 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 da, and that same line over a stated pulse has an acceleration to it that is. It takes a profound level of control and ability to execute uh, on a pianistic instrument, percussion instrument like a piano. It's it's a very challenging um, thing to do. So I'd like you to hear this Bill Evans excerpt, "Easy Living." Here's the line. So that last line, let me play that again.
And now here's the same line slowed down and you can really hear the elasticity, the acceleration of the line. So the number of notes that he's playing increase steadily over time. Um, there's a, an acceleration towards the pulse and away from the pulse, and that's really a kind of a tension within the music that makes jazz um, particularly remarkable art form. I should say, though, that many, many musics do this. It's innate to musicians to, to give that quality of tension in the time. In fact, the field of groovology which is a field within musicology, is really the study of what gives music that tension. And what the um, theorists have found, what the scholars have found, is they something they describe as participant discrepancies. These are differences in the stated time of two musicians. So a drummer and a bass player might have a slightly different pulse from one another that creates a tension. Now, this is not an accidental thing, and it's not necessarily a conscious thing, but it has to exist. The musicians have to be very relaxed, and they have to be able to be listening to each other and feeling where the other person's time is and to pull away from each other and move towards each other in a tension sort of way. And the, one of the only things I can think of that... that that relates to that tension is maybe the experience of sailing where you have the rudder and the boat and the sail and the wind at this angle where there's a pressure created that pushes the boat. Another one might be surfing um, where there's a, the right moment where there's enough tension to push but not enough to go over the top of the wave or to crash down below the wave. You're right in the tension zone and that's, that's what happens in music with time is the time creates a tension zone. Uh, in terms of how fast one person's going versus how fast another person's going, and, and there's a pull and a push against each other. And uh, it's a fascinating thing uh, to, to experience as a listener, and it's a wonderful thing to experience as a player. As I said, though, it's not just jazz, it's not just reserved for jazz musicians, but that's the art form within which the goal is to create that tension. Um, a lot of other musics have that inherently in the most relaxed and talented musicians. And there has to be a tremendous technical facility because any tension in the muscles um, inhibits the experience of time of the artist. And that will come out musically as feeling a little rushed or a little too far behind the beat. So a completely relaxed, relaxed musician can, can execute that level of time awareness. But it, it's, um, it requires technical proficiency as well. So there's this tremendous um, mechanical control in a very relaxed body that allows for the time tension to exist and allows that deep feeling to exist. And like I said, in, in, it can happen in any genre of music, but it requires an artist who's very, very technically skilled and also very relaxed. Um, so that's a brief discussion about time in music and how it creates tension and how it, it creates beauty through that tension. And with that, Travel Jazzman Scholar will sign off for now. Thanks.